what's up guys i hope you all are doing well today i'm going to talk about most popular topic it's indoor plants pests and diseases if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so you don't miss any new video in this video i will show you the most common plant pests and how to get rid of them before i start explaining how to get rid of these small creatures there is one thing you should have in mind plants pests are not a sign of poor hygiene they are just a part of nature there is a lot uh, you can do it to prevent plant pests and even more you can do to treat them successfully this video will help you prevent plant pests and also treat them successfully without the use of toxic chemical pesticides first of all where did they came from there is no simple answer to this question how did my plant get these bugs plant pests can spread from one plant to other nearby plants they can also be transported via clothing and gardening tools and even through the air in most instances they are already on the plant at the time of purchase but in such low number that they are invisible to the naked eye they can stay that way for years and then suddenly start repro reproducing madly when the environment environment is favorable for them a plant under stress improper light water humidity is much more vulnerable to the plant pests all you can do to prevent pests is keep your plants healthy and check them regularly uh, for early signs of their presence plants pests are much easier to eradicate when caught in the earlier stages the spreading of the plant pests from one uh, plant to another is often exer exaggerated it can uh, and does happen but not nearly as easily or as often as is commonly believed Isol isolating a new plant from a period of time does not guarantee protection here is what i suggest that you do with new plants spray the new plant with very throughtly with plain water until all stem and leaf surface are dripping wet this will probably take care of any ex exist, uh, existing pest problems and it will be safe to put your plant amo among other plants. More importantly, you should always inspect your plants regularly for sign of plants pests. Just because they do not have pests now doesn't mean they never will. If you discover plant pests earlier, they are much easier to treat and you will be able to correct the underlying source of stress sooner. How to identify the most common plant pests? Although there are many varieties of pests that may feed on your indoor plants you do not need to be an entomologist to recognize them first from the list is spider mites spider mites are very tiny a half dozen will fit on the head of the pin and difficult to spot with the naked eye until they are well established on the plant look for them on the underside of the leaves in a good light okay underside underside of the leaf this is the underside of the leaf they appear as tiny specks of dust 
but dust doesn't not collect on the bottom of the leaves. As the spider mite infestation advances, the mites begin to make very tiny webs. Misting will cause water droplets to adhere to the web and make the web easier to spot. By the time the webs become noticeable, the spider mite infestation is fairly well advanced. Spider mites use needle-like projection to extract fluid from the plant foliage. In time, they will leave the foliage with a permanently mottled appearance as they remove little pinpricks of the chlorophyll from the leaves. Favorite host for spider mites, spider mites includes palms, crotons, Dracaena marginata, uh, Schaeffleras, ivies, Diffenbachias, and Norfolk Iceland pines. Second from the list is aphids. commonly appear as cluster of tiny insects less than an eighth of an inch on tender new growth. Look for them on the end of the plant stems and on newly formed leaves. Ivies are among the favorite hosts for aphids. Okay, three things spider mites and aphids. A plain soap and water and hot pepper wax can be used safely to treat a spider mites. The key to all these products is to get 100% coverage of all leaf and stem surface top and the bottom. If you miss a few of the mites, which is easy to do because they are small enough to reside between spray droplets then they will start to reproduce and you have another infestation again in few weeks try to spray in a location where you can throughout drench all leaf surfaces without worrying about all the runoff uh, run your fingers along the leaf and stem surfaces to help get the complete surface coverage. Use rubber or latex gloves to avoid skin irritation. It is also advisable to respray again about five days later to get any mites that you may have missed in the first time. The best mite preventation is vigilance. Any mite prone plants such as palms should be checked every week for early signs of mites. Look for dust particles on the underside of leaves. Treat the mites uh, at the very first sighting. They are much easier to eliminate in earlier stages. Spider mites often are introduced on newly, uh, newly occurred plants or by plants that have been outside. You may want to spray such plants before you bring them inside. Spider mites also prey on plants that are under, stes under stress. Thus, it's important to keep your plants healthy by providing good light and proper water. Spider mites can reproduce in the 45 to 110 uh, degree range with optimum range of 85 to 90 uh, degree Fahrenheit. In unfavorable condition, cooler temperature, shorter day length, uh, reduces plant vigor. They go into uh, diapose when they hibernate don't feed or lay eggs. Pesticides are ineffective during the diapause uh, because the mites are not feeding 
when favorable condition returns the mite population can explode and give appearance of coming out of uh, nowhere nitrogen fertiliz fertilizers and encourage tender new growth which is very attractive to mites mites suck the chloroplast of the green cells and leave a telltale mottle appearance on the foliage. Mites use webs to travel from one feeding spot to another. A lot of visible webs mean an extensive infestation that have been there for quite some time. Okay, fungus nuts usually go unnoticed until they reach the adult stage. As adult, they have wings and they fly about and look like tiny black nuts. Before they mature, the larvae live in the upper surface of the plant's potting soil. In good light, the larvae can be seen as minute warm like things with the dark heads swimming on the surface of the soil following the appli application of water. These nuts can emerge from the soil of any plants, particularly those that, ha that, uh, that are high in organic matter and are kept constantly moist. Treating fungus nuts. Adult fungus nuts fly around and are an annoyance, but they are not harmful to people. Each nut live, lives for about five days. The trick is to get rid of next generation, the nut larva that live in the top layer of the soil. The larva feed on decaying organic matter. Decaying pine bark in potting mixes are decaying and, and the king plants pots roots uh, feed the larva. Tr try to keep the soil as dry as possible. Remove all loose soil from the surface that is not in immediate contact with the roots. This will eliminate many of the larva that live close to the soil surface and it will allow the soil to dry out sooner and deprive the larva of essential moisture. Keep the soil as dry as possible between waterings from the same reason. You can put a light layer of coarse coir, coconut husk, let's say, or sand on the soil surface, but this is not essential. These, these substances have sharp edges that, that care up uh, uh, the, the larva. Now, rep replacing the soil to eliminate the nuts may cure the problem, but it will also kill the plant, so don't do that. Another safe technique is to place half an inch slices of raw potato on the surface of the soil. After, the, uh, after a day or so, discard the slices along the larva inside. Repeat this until uh, there are no more larvae in the potato. For more serious infestation, try gnatrol to treat fungus gnats. It's a biological product that is safe to use and kill gnats larvae in the soil. It's uh, available online for uh, I think about $30. Now, there is detection trick. Add a little water to the soil and then Look very closely for tiny fungus nut larva, larva swimming in the water as it pools on the surface. You need a good light and a good eye to see them. If you don't, then if you don't, then your plant is probably nut free. Preventation is often the best remedy. Great uh, gnat infestation or often follow report, repotting because the potting soil uses uh, contaminated 
uh, with the gnat larva use sterile, sterile potting mix, mixes that are free of bark chips the potting mix should have a uh, uh, ample drainage material such as perlite so uh, that it drains well uh, drain wells and uh, allow the soil to dry out frequently fungus gnat uh, can uh, nearly always be traced back to over potting over watering and or poor soil quality white flies are aptly named they are tiny white flying insects they are usually in the clusters that fly about in the white clouds when dis uh, when disturbed white flies are found on the uh, hibiscus and point pointes but are re relatively uncommon on house plants now how can you treat a white fly well white flies are not common indoor plant pest problem they are mostly found on the herbs hibiscus uh, gerantinium poinsettia and plants that are usually grown outside white fly eggs are found on the outs uh, uh, on the underside of the plant leaves where they are barely noticeable if possible take the infested plants outside if temperature ab are above freezing of course and spray the underside of the leaf with a moderately strong hose spray be be uh, thorough so as to get all of the eggs in this process most of the adult adult fly, uh, white flies will also fly off doing this outside will also keep the white flies from flying about in your house those that leave your hibiscus will not survive long in the cold out, outdoors now those that stay on the plants will be killed by direct contact with the soap spray that is why you should be uh, that is why this should be done outside if uh, you cannot treat your plant outside then white flies are best treated at night when they are less inclined to fly about and when disturbed if uh, if you have a hand vacuum uh, use the first to vacuum the winged adults that are on the leaves then uses a solution of soapy water in, in a spray bottle and throughout the spray all leaves and stem surface until they are dripping wet if you are really uh, tr uh, throw out with the uh, with your spray treatment it should not be necessary necessary to respray however do be vigilant for signs of uh, live white flies dead carcasses uh, may fall from the leaves uh, onto surface below but as long as they are not flying you're okay it is important to treat all the inf in infested plants at the same time so that they don't reinfest each other inspect your plants carefully each week and at the first sign of any new white flies treat the plants again as described above now next on scale insects scale insects are hard to identify because they don't look like bugs and don't appear to move they are oval slightly raised bumps about an eighth of an inch long and are usually found along uh, along leaf leaf stems or on the uh, underside of the leaf leaves in the juvenile or crawler stage scales are 
translucent and take on the color of the leaf or stem surface as they mature scales, scales uh, develop a hard dark brown shell that is more visible uh, they are more visible uh, these scales are easily scraped of the plant tissue with a fingernail as the infestation increase uh, these uh, sucking insects will secret uh, will secret uh, will sec uh, secrete uh, sticky uh, substances called honeydew uh, that uh, f falls onto the leaves, furniture or floors. St uh, this thickness is the most obvious sign of scale and the one uh, that most people notice first. Uh, Favorite hosts include uh, ficus, spider plants, ferns, shefflerus, and aralias. Uh, mealybugs are actually a distinct type of a scale insect. I, I list them separately because they look very different than other type of scale. Mealybugs develop a soft white outer coating as they mature this give uh, the appearance of tiny bites of white cotton found in nooks and crannies where leaves join stems for this reason they are more noticeable than other scale insects favorite host for mealy bug include chinese evergreen pothos philodendrons jade and china doll treating mealy bugs and scale insects the key to successful eradic eradicating these creatures is to also spray the one that are out of sight that means the that means that whatever treatment you select you must get complete coverage to the drip point of all leaves and stem surface if you miss the few they will live to breed another day i do not recommend any pesticides because they are all hazardous to use and not 100% effect, effective against mealybug the best non-toxic treatment for mealybug is called brand x foliage cleaner it's available on internet it is a silicon based product so it is very slipper, uh, slippery it's a, uh, it's uh, its ability to penetrate is probably the key uh, to its effectiveness because it gets into the tiny crevices uh, that other spray miss you may uh, want to try spraying with rubbing alcohol uh, you can mix one part alcohol with five parts of water and add a, uh, and add a skirt of liquid soap. Be sure to spray all leaves and stem surface thoroughly. Uh, the common practice of applying alcohol with the cool tips is not effective because it misses the ones you cannot see. It all, uh, it's also best if you repeat this treatment again in five to seven days to catch any crawler that you missed the first time after that you should check the plant uh, weekly to see if they return uh, sun spray ultra fine whole culture oil is also mixed <coughs> with water and effectively smoother uh, the scale Complete coverage is important. Another good non-toxic spray is hot pepper wax. Wax, sorry. Uh, it uh, main uh, ingredients is hot cayenne uh, pepper that overheats the plant pests. Finally, neem oil works similarly to horticulture oil. 
it should be diluted with water <coughs> and pine sol to uh, counteract the onion like odor. Horticultural oil, hot pepper wax, and neem oil are available nationwide at plant and garden center and also by mail order. Important uh, thing you should have in mind none of these should be applied to plants in direct sun or in uh, high temperatures. Trips Ficus trees, most of which are grown in, let's say, Florida. Uh, sometimes experience a major infestation of trips. Quality grow, uh, growers treat their trees so that this is not a problem. Big box store often uh, do not purchase uh, these trees from uh, quality growers. I suggest, suggest you start your treatment by removing as many of the infested leaves and stems as possible because most of the trips are in a new growth and new growth is always at the end of stem uh, simply trimming of the last several inches of all stems will probably remove most of the critters if you do not mind using uh, pesticides uh, mal malatinian uh, is effective in treat treating trips. Alternatively, you can use a fine horticulture oil spray with both products. It's important to spray in a well ventilated area and to get complete coverage of all leaves and stem surfaces. Now, mushrooms or soiled mold. These unwanted plants growth come from the fungus spores in the soil. Uh, they thrive in cool, damp conditions. They are not harmful to plants. Fungal molds usually only occur if you do one of if you do one or more more of the following. Use unsterile potting soil, garden soil or compost. Use a soil mix that is compact and does not drain well. Add full food substances to soil such as, as soda or coffee. Keep your plants constantly wet or in a low light. Uh, the use of peat-based soilless potting mix usually prevents the problem. If you reported your plants prior to seeing mushroom growth, growth uh, then there is a very good chance that the soil that you used is contaminated with fungus spores. You may not want to use it again. Uh, uh, first, uh, when you see this, uh, uh, you should try scrapping of excess loose soil and the mold from the surface from the surface of the root ball you may notice some uh, whitish substances just below the surface of the soil this is the uh, equ equivalent of fungi roots and is called mycelia uh, try to sc scrape as much of this out of possible. The application of light spray of diluted alcohol sometimes help. Then let the soil dry out as much as possible without damaging the plant. It is usually necessary to repeat this process each time, each time you see a new mushroom pop out with uh, persistence 